is so much wrong with this scene. All the men, and by all the men, I guess I mean Rick and Dave, are wearing neckties. Like yep. they're fully in their work clothes with their ties, like dangling in their casserole. Casual the ties. They're not even in a double Windsor, Kara. These guys <laughs> are laid back. <laughs> you, chill. What are the sort of rules? I don't know these things. Do you wear a tie when you're eating dinner? You wear a tie while you fuck your wife, <laughs> is what you do in, the, in 1986. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because we've got more staying power than that god awful senator. I'm your host, No Illusions. <laughs> Heath's going to be unable to join us this week, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend Eli Bostic. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm fantastic, Noah. Let's do this thing. Uh, all right. I, I'm surprised at the enthusiasm, but we'll just carry on <laughs> like that's normal. We're also excited to welcome back guest masochist extraordinaire, Kara Santa Maria. Kara, welcome back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Right? That's the kind of enthusiasm I was looking for. <laughs> I, I have arrived. Tonally appropriate. Yep. So tell us, Kara, what will we be breaking down today? Well. Go on, Kara. Go Honestly, on. Yeah, right. That's that's the best description you could possibly give of this Use movie. Use words Just a to describe. Just sigh. <laughs> okay, I do appreciate that this film is not related in any way to hospice, although you did sure. make sure to give me something having to do with death, of course. Yeah, we got to get some death in there, obviously. And I said film in quotes. I don't think you mm-hmm. could see that. <laughs> this movie, question mark, is called Consider it all joy. I'm not sure why. And it was released in 1986. And it is like 50 some odd minutes long, but it feels interminable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's pretty impressive how long this 58 minute movie feels. How often did you guys pause it and be like, surely it's been 70 minutes and look and like only 30 seconds had oh, gone it by. was like a minimum wage shift at Hardee's <laughs> or something. Yeah. Yeah. You'll see my note throughout my notes. I'm like, okay, guys, only 40 minutes left. Yes. Oh, yes. We're at the halfway point. <laughs> oh, I was breaking out weird fractions. Guys, we're like three sixteenths of the way through yeah. now. This movie Yay. needs a Moadib to free us. <laughs> That's the level of... <laughs> oh, no. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the unhelpful help of religious people at a funeral, but you wish it felt more like having someone explain their process for eating Raisin Bran, <laughs> you <laughs> will love this sleep aid. I mean, movie. Sorry, did movie. I say yes, sleep yes. <laughs> so, Yeah, don't get me wrong. Nothing I love more than sitting down to a gam movie and realizing it's only 58 minutes long. But that runtime combined with the fact that pretty much nothing ever happens throughout this entire fucking movie, it leaves me with a real, what the fuck are we going to talk about then kind of feeling. I like, yeah, I felt like on the edge of my finished the movie and I was like, well, it's Thursday and we're (laughs) recording tomorrow. So we're not calling an audible. We're having conversation. A podcast will happen. You know what I noticed on the lower left hand (laughs) of the 7,300 frame? (laughs) You know what was happening in other windows of my internet while I was watching this movie? I 100% comment like regularly on the YouTube ads that pop yes, up. Right, right, right. Gotcha. What the hell else are you going to talk about? What the about? fuck else are you going to talk <laughs> right. about? I will tell you th- this is the only thing that I can think of, right? So we were lucky enough that Kara came to QED this past year and we got to hang out and I also got to see people interact with Kara. And I'm a sticky toddler, so people don't try to talk to me about smart people things, but they do do that to Kara because she is a smart person with smart people degrees. And sometimes those people don't, I'm going to put this delicately, have the social awareness to realize they've been describing a microbiome for the last 47 <laughs> minutes. And I will say, Cara Santa Maria is a pro. You're talking about a microbiome and your mother-in-law's toe fungus. She is locked in. She is with you. She is generous. I am already doing a cartwheel in the other room and singing a song I just made up. But if there's a movie version of that conversation, <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> that's what we watched this week. Oh, it's yeah. someone yep. not checking in to see whether or not Kara is desperately trying to escape the conversation. <laughs> and she was. The film. The film. She was trying. I was trying yeah. the whole yeah. time. And they did not care. No, they did not. <laughs> no, there was no early release for good behavior from this no. one. No. <laughs> All right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I mean, all I could come up with is best, worst, non-movie movie. movie. Mm -hmm. Sure. This was not a movie. What was it? No, it, it like yeah, right. Because the, like what little happens in the movie happens in the last thirteen minutes. It's insane. Mm -hmm. It's like a workplace instructional video was about not believing in Jesus. Yes. Right. It's that level of repetitive and boring that like yes. you expect them to also teach you how to use the fryer and shut it down correctly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was gonna go with best worst to pay. Fuck oh, yeah. Oh, good. Donald Trump would scoff at the boss's hair in this movie. It's incredible. So good. Noah, I know in 1986, you were only 30 or 40 years old, but did people <laughs> really walk around pretending that was hair? They must have. What happened to the American eyesight between 1945 <laughs> and 19? Because I, there's no way someone walked in with that hair the first day and someone wasn't like, hey, man, what's the what's on your fucking head? Yeah, <laughs> right. Right. You could just tell you. And, and again, like if they were playing this for comedy, that would be one thing. But they're just playing this straight. Everyone on the set was pretending that was this man's hair. Yes. And I know we're going to get to it. But like, did you notice the eyebrow hair mm -hmm. combination? Beautiful. Because they were very active, the eyebrows. Yes. At that war. Was, yeah. At war, the <laughs> yeah. eyebrow hair combination. <laughs> and I'm going to take the easy one. I'm going to go with best worst conflict for the first 99 one hundredths of the movie. <laughs> sure. This movie, like this woman's husband, will take a hard right turn into a different <laughs> plot towards the end. But most of this movie is a guy being mildly annoyed because the savior of the universe is watching out for him. <laughs> yep. That's pretty much it. All right. Well, we need to come up with a way of describing this movie without just saying generic white people stuff happened some more. So we're going to give ourselves a <laughs> quick break, but we'll be back in a minute with all the generic white people stuff that is. Consider it all joy. Yeah. No, I can call her. So, sorry. Give me a second. I heard a thump and that usually means people are hiding in my closet. Kara! Hey, Kara! <sighs> yep, that's what I figured. What's up, guys? Also, why do you never use my door? I mean, we use it when we first come in. Mm -hmm. So sit in the living room. Without you here? That would be creepy. Yeah, disrespectful. Anyway, we need your famous person help. <sighs> okay, with what? Uh, canceling our subscriptions. Yeah, Noah signed up for Yeller's Revenge Monthly like three years ago, and he doesn't even know where to go on the website to cancel. You're giving up on YRM? Well, I'm just, I'm buying the annuals now. Smart. But guys, if you want help finding and canceling your unwanted subscriptions, why don't you just use Rocket Money? What's Rocket Money? Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. I can see all my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, I can cancel it with just a tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service, and they'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple months of wasted money and negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill, and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. But does it actually save you money? It sure does. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. All right, Kara, we're in. Where do we sign up? Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash awful movies. That's rocketmoney.com slash awful movies. Rocketmoney.com slash awful movies. Thanks, Kara. Now, let's go get you some new sweaters. What happened to my old sweaters? Well, you know, if you don't want us to snack, just open your doors more often, Kara. Exactly. Do a check. <laughs> ate my sweaters? Is that yeah, we ate your sweaters. That's the implication, yeah. 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 Ah, wool. <laughs> you wanted to see us, Chris? Yeah, what's the big idea? I had a great idea for a movie. You did? Yeah. So uh, you guys remember when my cousin's husband died? Well, sure. Yeah, so I was talking to her and she told me that she realized that God put into her heart that this is all for the good. 
Oh, so her husband was like secretly a really bad guy? Uh, no, no, he was he was a great guy. But she didn't like him. Well, well no, no, she she loved him a lot. Well, well, then how could it be good? Well, so yeah, so that's what she was saying. That if you think about it, all things that God does give you, that even when the bad things happen, it's still all good. Right? Oh. Uh, Chris, are you sure that isn't nonsense? Yeah, or or maybe her entire social structure is built around her religion. So she was just telling you that she was firm in her belief because it was the only way for her to regain her social cachet in a patriarchal society so terrified of death, its entire faith system is in defiance of it. No, I, I'm pretty sure she just had a good point. All right, let's make a movie then. All right. Hey, man, what's the social cachet? I think she means cashier. I didn't want to call. Oh, oh, her. okay, got it. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start with an in memoriam of somebody's great grandma, which I'll go ahead and tell you just didn't make me feel great out of the gate on this one. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Yeah, and let's pull back the lens for a little bit, right? This story is about a woman whose husband died. The end. That is yep, it. That's the whole <laughs> and someone was like, Spoiler. We have got to tell grandma's story. She is a survivor. She literally, mm -hmm. she survived one person. So yeah, we have got to tell, do yep. we have 60 minutes of film, <laughs> several thousand feet of old timey camera film to waste? Also, there's this guy, like it comes up and it says, you know, great grandma, ma, grandma, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then it ends with woman of God. And I'm like, yeah, but at some point she was snorting lines and sucking dick, right? And good for her. God. Like at some point though. I mean, it was the eighties, right? Yeah. We hope. Right, right. We hope. <laughs> I, I was so depressed by the like overhanging chocolatey thick patriarchy of this movie because every woman in it is just like I mean look the best thing about our lives are our husbands so when they die right. I can understand why you would feel literally like you don't exist anymore trust me I get it yep. yeah this movie was giving me from the first second deep Mormon flashback yeah deep, oh, sure. I was gonna say yeah, yeah this is uh, this is every visit home for Kara a hundred percent like this I was three years old when this movie came out this is primo Mormon time for me mm. it was was, yeah, it was just very, very 80s. Four is when Kara started to ask questions. She was yeah, like, right, look, right. I want animal right. crackers as much as the next person, but this <laughs> Joseph Smith guy, he didn't show anybody who wasn't a friend of the plates. <laughs> so, and then the, the movie says, inspired by a true story. And I'm like, yeah, that's the fucking Book of Mormon said too. Come on. Like, right, yeah, yeah. They also, also, how could it not be? Right. How could it not? A lady's husband died? Because nothing <laughs> happens. Yeah. <laughs> And she was Christian. Yeah, it's funny because it said inspired by a true story. And I'm like, I call bullshit because this is religious. But no, nothing happens. So yeah, gotcha. There's, there's gotcha actually, no illusions. There's no magic in this movie at all. Nope. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, none. Yeah. Nothing even extraordinary. Like there are extraordinary true stories that people attribute Christianity to. <laughs> this is a very ordinary tale. <laughs> yep. It is. Yep. Yeah. It's just boring Christian lives and we have to watch them. Oh, and speaking of which, we get the like the most generic possible music over the credits. Oh, I love that. This music has the bride's sister is going to sing the first dance vibe so hard. <laughs> oh, with <laughs> blah, blah, blah. full vibrato, <laughs> completely in her head voice. <laughs> oh, and she's like pronouncing God with a hard O and I love oh. God. And it's just like, oh, <laughs> shut up. Like that kind of singing where when someone starts doing it, you're not sure if it's a bit and then you very quickly have to be like, oh no, Oh, that's how they sing. Oh, Keep your gonna, body stop, perfectly stop still. Laughing. Stop laughing. Keep your body perfectly still. And the intro. Smile. What do normal people do when they listen to music they're enjoying? They smile. Too big a <laughs> smile. A small smile. The <laughs> intro is long. Like I'd yes, say it's about 10% so of the film. Sure. It's just yeah. this, this weird religious song. And like, I don't even remember. Was it a montage of family photos? Yeah, it was a bunch yeah, of okay. family photos. And I love one of the family photos is the couple in bed, right? Husband and wife in bed while husband reads the Bible. I'm like, who took that picture? Fucking Jerry Falwell Jr.? What the hell is going on in these people's lives? <laughs> Jerry I feel Falwell that way Sr. about everything on Instagram, though. Don't you? Like all, like, I feel like every influencer's life. I'm like, who took the picture? Who took that picture? 
then I think you should follow one Heath Enright, who yes. has, I think, three pictures, and <laughs> two of them are of pizza. <laughs> yep, there you go. <laughs> the influencer we all need. Hey, seriously, it's reality. I like that. Verite. <laughs> so the credits wrap with... Claire, who is going to be our main character, sitting with a mustachioed guy who we will later learn is Nick. And they're looking over this photo album that we've been looking at. She goes, oh, look at this. This is the picture of that time that David won Employee of the Year. Look, Employee of the Year is one thing. You don't really have control over that. And if you want to be proud of it, I I'm okay with it. But if you take a photo and remember that moment... It's another thing entirely. <laughs> right. Like, and you put it in there with the picture of like your child's birth and shit. <laughs> well, and yeah. here's the thing we're talking about this with hindsight because we know what happens in this movie. But you have to remember when we first sat down to watch this movie, you've got Claire, who later we find out is David's wife, sitting with Rick, mustache man, and they're talking about David like he's their child. I was so yep. confused by what was happening. Very confusing. Here. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and, and Rick points to one picture and he goes, oh, I remember that fishing trip. All David caught was a cold. And I'm like, I want to punch this guy. This guy asks if you're working hard or hardly working and you yep. know that he does. Oh, yeah. And here's the fun thing. My early notes are like, this fucking guy talks like an asshole. But everyone in the movie talks like that. So mm -hmm. it's like it's like the twist at the end of a bad movie where everyone's a vampire. That's yes. the experience <laughs> of watching this film. <laughs> Also, I want to point out, I got my first ad break at two minutes and 18 seconds. The credits are barely even over. I'm like, yep. Eli's just doing this to try to normalize this and, and, and make me listen to dear old dads again, I bet. Look, I'm just saying, if you get used to it here in the YouTube verse, <laughs> start listening to my content. <laughs> but yeah, so but they both sure missed David. And Rick turns to her at this point and he goes, how did you and David meet? And then she like doodly doos back to them meeting at church. At church. Yeah. It's the most boring. F Imagine thinking, because here's the thing. The sentence is, we met at church. Imagine thinking this merited a doodly do. Imagine right. It. Well, and then keep this in mind, right? The entire rest of the movie will be presented as the doodly do answer to how did you and David meet? You're so. right. The whole movie. Yeah. You just had like every 15 minutes, you got to just imagine just Rick sitting there just going, oh my God, she's still fucking answering. Oh my God, she's still done. <laughs> Just Rick slapping his thighs ever more frequently. Yes. Well, <laughs> well, 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 well. So yeah, so, but she goes to this new church. David accosts her at her car as she's going to leave. And he's like, excuse me. She turns around with this like, hope you're not a rapist smile on her face. Mm -hmm. Now we will later learn she just has resting, hope you're not a rapist face. But uh, that in, yep. in this first instance, it was a bit jarring. She looks the way, throughout this movie, the way other people look when I am introduced without warning. Sure. Like the way I see strangers just sort of like, oh, he's a lot. He's a lot. It's like a little beast you brought into this funeral. <laughs> That's how she looks at all times. Slightly surprised and horrified. I blame the fact that she's actually, I mean, this is a hot take. So I don't know if you guys will agree, but I think she's, first of all, she's beautiful. She would be way hotter if she wasn't dressed like a pilgrim the whole movie. Right. But <laughs> sure. Yeah, right. no, that would help. She's beautiful and she's kind of a good actor. Nobody else in the movie is good. And so it's like yeah. jarring her acting next to theirs. Yeah, she's worlds above everybody else in this movie. I can't yeah. really tell if she's that good or everyone else is that bad, but yes. Right, it's it's all relative. But, but I do think that that look of like surprise is legitimate. She's like, what am I doing? What happened to Why my did... career? That's just the actor being like, oh, that's the delivery you went with, huh? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Like, for example, when David first meets her and tells her that, I don't know, welcome to the church and can we go on a date? I don't even remember. It was so inconsequential. He keeps referencing the college department. <laughs> he goes, everybody at the college department is blah, blah, blah. I'm at the, co and I'm like, I don't know what that means. What is nope. a college department? No fucking idea. I do want to <laughs> say, though, David is hilariously attractive. When she turned around, like I looked at this man and I'm like, that is a man who can flex his cheekbones. Okay. Oh, it's beautiful. 
<laughs> you know, yes. it took me like 45 minutes before I finally realized he looks exactly like James Marsden. He yep, does. James Marsden. Did you guys notice mm-hmm. that? I, I noticed it in your notes and then I'm just like, oh fuck, that's what it is. I want to fuck yeah. Cyclops. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't remember where I have it in my notes, but I do call him James Marzipan at one point. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, fair. But yeah, but he invites her to lunch with all the other churchies and then that descends into a montage of them dating. Oh, right. Yeah. I wrote in my notes, Kara, this is could be our friendship if you weren't so close-minded about sharing a seven up picnic with me. <laughs> <laughs> I do love, I do love a low budget film because they don't care about showing like, you know, they're not afraid to get sued for showing all of these blatant products. Right. So yeah. it's, it's like a cool time capsule. Like I was like, whoa, look at that glass seven up bottle yes, from right. Dying would, Fanta. You look like you could kill somebody with that seven up bottle right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now Speaking of the 7-Up, because they do have a 7-Up picnic, he very clearly pours something out of a bottle and we're like, ooh, champagne. And the Christians are like, no, it's 7-Up, yes, damn it. Right. So, <laughs> Kara, I would like to invite you to play a game I play with all my female identifying friends called He's Perfect But, oh, right? Which okay. is if you met a man and he was perfect in every way, physical, 10, emotional, 10, job, 10, outlook, 10, but... He insisted on a 7-Up picnic. <laughs> How much does that lower his number by? I thought you were going to ask me, what is your butt with this man? And I was going to say, Christian, 100%. Christian, yeah. Yeah, Christian yeah. is there, but we're going we're gonna to pretend he's not Christian uh, oh, and the fault okay, is the 7-Up okay. picnic. It's fully, oh no, I'm, I'm down. If it's a 7-Up picnic. You're down for a 7-Up picnic, actually, all right. I actually don't even like 7-Up, but you have to remember too, like I don't drink, so right. I actually yeah. think That's it'd be true, cool so you'd be fine somebody, with it, yeah. Yeah, but if that was like a classic Coca-Cola, I'd be sold. There you go, see? Okay, but what about, so here's the thing though, is that like, what if the rest of the lunch was Diagonal cut sandwiches, two full carrots, an apple, an orange, <laughs> four wheat crackers, and a sad strip of lettuce just sitting there like it belongs. What, what would you say to that picnic, though? I don't know. I'm kind of not mad at this. I think, there we look at this. I think the thing I'm most mad at is that he then proposes to her in stripy tube socks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, look, no, for, to, to be fair, the only kinds of socks that were available for men in 1986 were it's dress true. socks and stripy tube socks. That's all That's we true. had. Yeah. But like, here's the thing. He's so casual when he proposes to her, but for the rest of the film, casual Friday, weekend, looking through the classifieds, he's wearing a button-down yep. shirt. It makes he will wear no a button-down shirt till the second he dies. Yes. <laughs> Also, there was a there's this great thing about the proposal that I love because they're sitting on a dock when he does it and he just sort of sets the box there and like waits for her to notice. And I so wanted her to get super excited and accidentally knock it into the water because it's right on the oh, edge there. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I, we, I think we we're all waiting for that. <laughs> so I can't, if, if when I had proposed to Anna, she had reacted how this actress proposed, I would have taken it back. Right. My I would have said so never much mind. More, <laughs> I, I recently told Anna about the good taco place in our neighborhood reopening and she was so much more psyched than this couple are to (laughs) marry each other forever. Also, okay, so the montage apparently includes them getting married because then we get him like carrying her over the threshold and apparently like she hasn't seen this house before. Yeah, he surprised her with a house. Right? I guess that was the thing. A guy would just go and buy a whole fucking house and then just be like, surprise, you live here now. (laughs) You live here now. That's what we do to puppies. We do that to puppies. (laughs) But you also have to remember, this is a white man in the 80s. So that's true. It's very easy for him to get a job. He makes enough money to support an entire family. She does nothing. And you know that house costs, what, $11,000? Yeah, really. It's a mansion. It's so... Now... I I do have a theory. We never see it from the outside fully. So I would like to postulate and hold my truth. Hold the space and hold me in the light when I say this. I think it may be a tree house. No. Based on what we see of the house. We see from the inside. I think there's a good argument. It's a gorgeous A-frame. I wanted to hate hate this house, but I was obsessed. Oh, that with view the of the mountain view of the forest. There, oh, oh, so no, nice. I want to go into this house and like have sex with a dude just because I know it'll upset their ghosts. Like I'm in. I'm 100 <laughs> percent yeah, in. It's very romantic. There were a lot of stairs outside. Do you remember? There's one yeah. scene when he's like, "Got to yeah. go to work now," and then he like climbs a pyramid to get to his. Oh car. yeah, no, it's like he's like he's it's like he's going to find ancient wisdom in China or some shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like at Machu Picchu or something. He's yeah. like, got to take all these steps. But it is a beautiful house. I wanted to hate it. I was very confused by 
by like where they live. But later he references San Bernardino and says that he went to UCLA. So yeah, I think they're somewhere in like the mountains of California. Yeah, like yeah. Maybe in the valley or something. But it's, that yeah, was it's my guess. Beautiful. Yeah, these are the people who vote for Gavin Newsom, but not Katie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're mad. <laughs> so I am mad. I'm Are you mad. mad about Schiff? Yeah, mad. I wanted Katie. You know, Katie. Funny she was smart. She had a whiteboard. She did, but Schiff was my guy, man. You Schiff know, didn't deserve her. Yeah, no, didn't deserve her. He's fine. Two great options there. Yeah, two great options. And Schiff was my guy in L.A. Katie was down in in O.C. She wasn't my girl. Yeah, he wears cologne. So, yeah, I get it. He's a bit establishment. <laughs> I get it. So, oh, you're like Katie's not. Um. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Katie was rogue. Katie was ready. She could have killed. She might have hey, killed I, the Supreme Court justice. I will, I will vote for Katie for fucking president, but we're getting off track here. So, <laughs> okay, okay. No, don't worry. There's no movie. Oh, we you're right. You're right. right. Exactly. Really so, we can talk about whatever happened. the fuck we want. How dare you say that to me? <laughs> you know what? This reminds me of. Oh, oh, okay. So here's something annoying about this scene. They're, we're still in montage mode, right? Mm -hmm, montage mm -hmm. of the meeting, of them falling in love, of them. There's a lot of rowboat situations that make me uncomfortable. Yep. yep. And then getting married in the house. And then th there's like, a, but this is all film footage. The montage is footage. But then all of a sudden it's like, they show a picture of a birth certificate and several stills of a baby. And I'm like, oh God, the baby died. <laughs> like, I can't. I, she why, couldn't make it to the movie. Right. But then she is in the movie. She's very creepy. Children right. of the corn style doll. But like, why did they do that? That was a weird choice. Right. Yeah. It, it felt like when you tell a co-worker, like a co-worker's like, hey, my son was born. And you're like, oh my gosh, adorable. And then they show you more pictures and you're like, you knew I said adorable through social contract. What? <laughs> who? I don't want to see a 12. Why would you think I want more? Picture. Oh, you know what? That You know what? Now that I've seen that picture, Fuck your baby. Like, what are you? Stop it. Stop it. One picture. Well, and there's and there's so many fucking pictures. We're like, yes, so we many. get it. The baby existed in the time dimension. It got older. Yes. That's what babies do. If yes. you just showed us them with a four-year-old kid, we wouldn't be like, what, what the fuck happened to the baby? You know? Was that child once a baby or did they just emerge whole cloth <laughs> from a woman? <laughs> I have questions. Yeah, I call this montage my Instagram. No, yeah, right. Yeah, okay, fair. fair. Yeah. So, okay, so the montage eventually resolves with dad bouncing the daughter on his knee. Which I have no jokes about. I was happy I have to no say that. Jokes. <laughs> Just like to point out, I have no jokes. Great change. <laughs> this you is guys funny. never had jokes about little girls bouncing on their dad's lap. You no, we did not. my struggles. <laughs> no, mine says... <laughs> check your privilege. Mine just says, oh, thank fuck. I thought the little girl would be dead. Um, yes. This is where <laughs> I got my first ad and super fun fact, when you're air playing your iPhone to your Apple TV, it like skitzes out when ads come up. Like it doesn't let you skip them. The whole thing Ooh. disconnects each time. So I was forced to, well, at first I was forced to sit through the ads. And then I was like, I can't handle this. So I would refresh and reconnect during every ad break. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. the first ad I saw was this super weird ad for Newsmax. Yes, I'm so glad Trump. you got it too. Yes, Trump was shitting all over Fox. And I was like, mm -hmm. what? Like, wh first of all, why am I being served this ad? Second of all, apparently, according to Newsmax, Fox is now too woke. Yes. What is happening? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, this was beautiful because I've never been served a perfectly targeted ad that missed, right? right? Because look, let's be clear. The only three humans in history who've watched this movie who are not sitting there nodding along to this Newsmax commercial are us, right? right? Like, this yeah. is a perfectly targeted ad. You're right. I didn't even think about that. Of course, it's not about me and my viewing history. It's because I'm watching this fucking movie right now. <laughs> right. Right. Oh yeah. God. Well, or and all the other movies we've made you watch. They yeah, know my algorithm is so fucked. You guys. Yeah, we, yours, we fucked your yours is beyond so repair. Uh, all right. So then we get David takes the kid to the bed, and then he comes back, and he's doing this like he's trying to be romantic, and he's got a little flower, and he's moving it back and forth behind the couch, and they're playing the Jaws theme and shit. Or they're, I'm sorry, they're playing like one note away from the Jaws theme to avoid a lawsuit. <laughs> yeah. But like, she can't see it. Thank, that's what I wrote, I wrote my notes. Who is he doing this bit for? 
us? Right. It's behind right. her. It goes yeah. so long back and <laughs> forth. And she's just sitting there going like, I will read more of this, I guess. Yeah, she's just she's just sitting there reading her book on her ugly ass couch with her shoes on. Yes. Who curls up on the couch with their shoes on? Thank you. Oh, the 80s were a different time. Uh. You just put your mud soaked urine stained <laughs> shoes right on the upholstery. What are you doing to your <laughs> shoes? Um, Seriously. Dunking them in mud and then I pee on them. <laughs> well, so, and then David comes back. He's got the rose. She finally does notice it. And he goes, you know, I think it's past your bedtime too. And we're like, ooh, fucky thing. Cause this is a very attractive couple. But then he's like, no, seriously, we need to go to bed early to make sure that we uh, get to church on time. You know, we don't want to. Yeah. And also, it's actually creepier than that. It's, I think it's time for this little girl to go to bed. And I yeah. wrote in my notes, sploosh, am I right, Kara? <laughs> 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 Because that's exactly what he just said when carrying his daughter to bed. Yep. 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 Yeah. So, okay. So the, so the next morning we I'm getting ready for church, David's just looking damn good in a three-piece suit. Uh, she calls up. She's like, hey, can you bring my uh, my Bible down when you come? And, and he's like, yeah. But then he gets this cool idea to put a little sweet I love you note in her Bible so she can find it in church. Yep. And I wrote my notes. Okay, the churchiness is going to be a problem. But other than that, me and David could be an item. I think we could. Yeah. I think that was. Oh, oh he is. Fine. Yeah, he's really romantic. He does wink too much. Yeah, I feel like I would be too sexually adventurous for David. I feel like he would <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. not be ready to burn in my fire. But <laughs> <I> think, that's <laughs> me. I don't. I don't think that's unique to you, Eli. I think every yeah, right. walking right. person on the planet is too sexually adventurous for David. Wait, wait. The girl on top. Hold on. I, a second. I didn't hear anyone else saying they pee on their shoes. <laughs> <laughs> reverse cowgirl you mean the cowgirl of the devil <laughs> i'm still so i'm still at this point confused as to who the mustache man is i'm right. still like like stuck on yeah we're this. still waiting to find out who he is I, I think the thing that made me the most angry in this whole film is that when we cut to church the conductor that we cut to them you know it's like a like an establishing shot of the church. They're sitting there in the pew. Everybody's singing a hymn. He winks at his wife. It's all the, you know, ingredients. And then they cut up to the conductor, I think who's also the pastor, I don't know. And he is conducting the song in 2-2, two, two, but it is yes. clearly in 4-4. Four, four, yes. And it's <laughs> making me lose my it's mind. Like, <laughs> it's like Eli clapping on two and four. And yeah, okay, he's, a, he's a hands-off conductor, right? He's not micromanaging the rhythm. He'll get around to it when he gets around to it. Also, like, here's a weird question that occurred to me in this moment. Because like, we did come up with good early religious music, right? We have like Carmina Burana and shit like that. But then at some point, all religious music became like, wah, 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 yeah. wah, wah. Oh my <laughs> fucking yeah. God. The, the, and the song ends and the pastor goes, excellent singing. And we all wrote, you fucking lie. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to put this song right up here on the fridge. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so he's, he tells everybody to turn their uh, Bibles to James 1.1 1, 1, so that he can talk about how later in the movie something will happen. I guess. <laughs> liar. Also liar. Two lies. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But he starts, the preacher starts talking about those times that tests one's faith. So, you know, get ready. All right, so that night we get the two of them lying in bed. David's reading the Bible. Like you do. Because this is the most boring possible couple. In his three-piece pajama suit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, right. His pajamas have a vest, yeah. So, and, and then, she, but she asks, she's like, hey, what did you think about the uh, pastor's foreshadowing earlier in the in the previous scene? Yeah, sorry, that's, uh, that last scene was a little too subtle for the generation yes. that's going to be convinced that Facebook will steal all their pictures at midnight <laughs> unless they post this status. <laughs> so do you mind if we go over the fucking higher and lower points? She goes, well, you know, I just, I don't understand why God would like, for example, cause that mudslide that just ruined Tom and Jan's new carpeting. <laughs> fucking insane. Here's an actual two sentences that happened in this movie. I think I wouldn't like it if bad things happened to me. Me too. And I wrote in my notes, this is what I pictured conversations between Taylor Swift and Aww. Travis Kelsey being like. Sad. <laughs> it's just on a private jet. <laughs> That's so sad. So yeah, so, but, but Claire's like, you know, I bet we're going to have to go through a lot of trials, huh? And David's like, yeah, mostly in the next act. Nothing's going to happen in the first, late in the third act, second act, I guess something's going to happen. But yeah. 
Right. And so the, there's obviously the start or the continuation of this argument that God makes good people go through bad things to mm. build character. But the weird twist on this, for me at least, was that it's not so much about building character, but they kept using the word joyful. Yes. Like this is just, this is joyful. Like how are mudslides joyful? Well, because it gives you a chance to build character. Yeah. yeah. What is the build character thing? This is like, this is a Calvin and Hobbes joke. What right. the fuck is happening? Yes. Yeah. Well, Well. she's like, you know, why would God like, you know, Tom is a good, and Jan are good Christians. Why would God mess up their carpet? And David goes, well, you know, I was just reading about how the early Christians were tortured and fed to lions. So, you know, maybe keep your mudslide bullshit in perspective, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what the point of that was. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I, apparently he's saying that the church like is better because of all that great persecution they got early on. Right. Somehow the church, they built more churches because of that. There was some sort of quantity yeah. argument that I didn't quite understand. Yeah. He gives the example. He's like, imagine if the Romans had just said, sure, worship how you want. And I'm like, well, actually they're, their king converted to your religion and then made everybody be it. So that, yeah, that they was really did. That was the Roman kind of thing is they just let anybody be whatever. Yeah, he makes he makes the, the equal yet opposite argument for he does like a weird Bible red scare next. Yes, yeah. He is. It's like very strange. Like, like all those communists in Russia and China have to sneak their belief in God. And it's like, yeah, but that's just the same thing, right? Like. Like, it's the same thing, just the opposite. Like, you get that, right? Like, forced. Right, but I, I like, but his point seems to be that that's better, right? Because he's like, <laughs> right. you know, if, if people <laughs> yeah. were persecuting us, I bet we'd read our Bibles more. And I'm like, dude, you were reading the Bible at the start of this conversation. You can't, you could read, <laughs> you'd have a Bible in each hand, I guess, and read it more that way, Right. <laughs> Yeah, he actually like says at some point that he was like lazy about reading the Bible. Yeah. Like he's like, I, he literally is like, I've been, I could probably do. And you're like, in every scene in this movie, you're reading the Bible. Yes. Every scene. Literally. It's like, you know, I read it when I shit, but not when I pee. You know, I can, I can read stuff. <laughs> not when I pee. I could get, I could put it on a little stand. Yeah. One of those yeah. Nook stands. Yeah. So, okay. So the next morning, David calls Tom to help him with that mudslide. Right, because he's a good Christian, and good Christians help people with their mudslides. Mm -hmm. There's also a great moment where he he tries to clear his breakfast dishes, but because he's a good husband, but she tells him not to because she's a lady, right? And yeah, she's yeah. like, "Please, mm -hmm. please, it's literally the only reason I exist at this point <laughs> oh, in time. Yes. You have, you can't take the day. What else will I do for the rest of my life? <laughs> right? Yeah, I'll just watch my child color. Yeah, right. No, I even wrote, "Mom does dishes as is her purpose." <laughs> Yeah, that's all she. Yeah, that's all she can do. I I love the use of the term here. I'm gonna go help him shovel mud. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like gay sex. I, yeah. That's my new favorite phrase. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna go shovel some mud. Yeah, because he literally is like, I gotta leave work early, and I'm gonna be late tonight. I'll be shoveling mud if you know. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so but he leaves. He's left her a sweet little note on the counter. So she goes to the drawer where she keeps all his the notes that he leaves her. And it seemed like a sweet habit that he had until she opens this drawer and it's just bursting with 18,000 notes. Now it's yeah. just a creepy obsession type thing. Right. right. Now it's a prank. Yeah. Right? It's like it's ransom like, Again, like, yeah. in between the sheets of the toilet paper, David, God. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So we cut to David at work. Mark and papers. We're finally going to meet mustache guy. Right. Rick. Yes, this is Rick. He comes in and he's like, hey, it's time for a break and some dialogue. And he's like, oh, OK, I guess it is. He's also wearing an epic three piece suit. Oh, my God. Yes. It's, what is it's going on with the three pieces? Fucking white vest, white slacks, powder blue shirt. Like, it's look. I'm telling you, oh, you know, yeah. nobody misses Rick when he walks in a fucking room. <laughs> Hell no. Hell no. That was a suit to do cocaine in. Yes. Oh, so yeah. much cocaine. Oh, yeah. oh, Rick's hair is so impossibly round, too. It's like a clown. <laughs> it's like a helmet for a clown is what it is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. So, but Rick is like, hey, David, I noticed you've left work early the last couple of days. So uh, any cool fucky cocaine stuff uh, related to that or, or and he's Yeah, he's like. He's like excited that he's cheating on his wife. And then he's like, no, yeah. I'm doing service to the Lord. And he rolls his eyes. <laughs> oh, the eye roll is priceless. It's my 
fa- proper response to the proselytizing. Rick became our voice for most of he this did, movie. Because yeah. David will just be like, and I also enjoy a nice refreshing water with lemon. And Rick's like, oh my God, I want to die when you talk. <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> Well, and it's, of course, it's the Christian movie version of a non-Christian, right? So Rick is like, wait a minute, you're helping your friend, you know, with with a mudslide in his home. I'm not a Christian and don't understand kindness. Why would you do such a thing? <laughs> what is this halop you speak of? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, Mike, and he's like, well, you know, as a Christian, I always have to help everybody. And he's like, oh, dude, you, you always bring up religion every time we talk. To which David says, what? Because I brought up Christianity? That's not religious. Oh, that's the weirdest line in this whole movie. Well, second weirdest. We'll get to the weirdest. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> I wrote in my notes, really? What is it? Nouns? <laughs> right. Well, but what he's doing is he's doing, and I didn't realize that this bullshit was as old as it is, but he's doing the whole, it's not a religion, it's a relationship thing. Oh. oh. And at one point he says, you know, one of these days, Rick, you're going to need to be my religion. And I'm like, man, that sounds like a threat. And then I thought about it and I'm like, oh, wait, it is a threat, though. A hundred percent a threat. Yeah, it's totally a fucking threat. But then he gets a call from Claire and Claire's like, hey, this scene is over, actually. And he's like, oh, uh, sorry, Rick, the scene's over. You got to leave. So Rick leaves. Uh, All right. Will I see you later for dinner? Yeah, I'll take a free meal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Classic Rick. Classic Rick. Rick. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yeah, they invite Rick over for dinner, which apparently, at least to this point, is the plot of the goddamn movie, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is my third, you guys, this movie is so incredibly boring. Nothing has happened. <laughs> How long is this movie? Right. Yeah. The journey of everyone's notes, because I'm getting more joyful, Noah's getting more nervous, and Kara's getting more desperate for something to happen. It's an excellent <laughs> It's an excellent progression happening. And, and I want you guys to understand, at this point, the three of us have been talking about the movie for longer than the movie has been movieing. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> by a lot, I'd say. Yeah. 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 All right. So I'll tell you what, we're going to take a quick break, regain our bearings and figure out what the fuck to talk about. We'll be back in a flash with even more of Consider It All Joy. Ow. Nope. Still not enough. Still, maybe a second shock collar. Well, I mean, I guess we could try. Hey, guys, what you doing? Oh, hey, Kara. Well, ever since Noah's heart attack, we've been trying to help him eat better, but discouragement doesn't really seem to be doing the trick. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm just, I'm in pain a lot of the time. Like, you know, more is just kind of relative, you know? Sure. But guys, you know, if you want to eat healthier the easy way, why not try Factor? What's Factor? Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Two minutes? That's a meal plan that'll save me time, but will it save me money? Sure will. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. All right, Kara, that sounds great. Where do I sign up? Head to factormeals.com slash awful50 and use code awful50 to get 50% off. That's code awful50 at factormeals.com slash awful50 for 50% off. All right. Well, looks like we won't need these shock collars after all. Mm, Maybe we should keep them on. I have to go to the post office today. Yeah, probably for the best. The post office? Yeah, lines make him bitey. Sure, makes sense. I don't think it does. <laughs> Are we almost there? Yep. Yep. Just a bit further and there. Dude, what the heck is this? Well, Fred, I knew you weren't convinced by my metaphor about the judge that we talked about. And I thought, by golly, why don't I just show him? So uh, welcome to my courtroom. Your your courtroom? Yep. I'm the judge. And I built this courtroom and you have been found guilty. Uh, of what? Oh, uh, of, of all sorts of stuff. But, but it doesn't really matter because nobody is as great as the judge. Well, how do we know that? It's because I, I built the courtroom. Did, did you? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. But, so, but even if we grant that you built the courtroom, that doesn't make you p- perfect. Yes, it does. Why? Because you can't build a courtroom unless you're perfect. 
I, d- I don't understand how that's remotely true. It doesn't, the metaphor doesn't hold up for that. Anyway, you're guilty and the punishment that you're like this, your punishment is death. Okay. But, but I'm going to pay your fine. To yourself? Yes. Because, and this is serious, because I love you. Wait. Okay, so, so uh, I'm sorry, to be clear, you built a courtroom and the defendants, you built the defendants so you could sentence them to death and then pay their fine to yourself. Because I love you. Yes. I, I got to tell you, man, setting this in a forest courtroom not only hasn't made it make more sense, it actually made it obvious what a terrible system this is. Well, then I'm afraid I'm going to have to burn you with fire forever. Okay, so you hear how that makes it worse, right? Surprisingly, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with David getting home from work. Daughter sure is excited to see him. Yep. Yeah. I have to mention that, like, because obviously she's, but like, I have to mention that because what the fuck else are we going to talk about, right? Yes. Yes, I, at this point, I was writing in my notes, I don't know how much time is left in the movie, but I think I might be in hell. Mm-hmm. Literally nothing has happened in this film. I wrote to this point, this movie could be summarized as generic Caucasian existence. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Stock footage, the movie. And I wrote in my notes, how much you want to bet that little girl is homeschooled? <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, he gets home and, and the wife is like, oh, you know, we got Rick coming over for dinner. We haven't Christianized him yet, but man, we're still chipping away at him, you know? Yeah, she's like, oh my God, he's going to be here in half an hour. We need to set the table. How long does it take to set the table? Right? Oh, in the 80s? Yes. You, you don't know. There were so many forks back then. So many <laughs> forks. True, too many. It's very Salad good. Salad forks. Do you go from the inside to the outside or the outside to the inside? I'm still outside confused in. by outside. this. Soup fork. Outside in? Dessert okay. fork. So, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Eli. <laughs> so, yeah, so so Rick shows up for dinner. They all sit down to eat. D- uh, Becky says Grace. Is Becky the child? The child has a name? Yeah, yeah, it's on the birth certificate. Of course, the child's name is Becky with the good hair. <laughs> they they eat a casserole. Yes. Who does that? Who literally knows they're having company? Like, they're throwing a dinner party, and it's like, I know what I'll make. Casserole. Casserole. Mm. From the Greek kothion, meaning whatever canned shit the white lady had in her pantry. Yes. My Hell God. Yeah. <laughs> so, Who needed a recipe book when you had the back of a soup can? That's like, what I- <laughs> that, isn't that what you eat when like there's you're out of food? Like right, it's just yes. very, yeah. It's just like, well, I don't have enough to make a whole meal, but I have enough to make a <laughs> casserole. Yeah. Yeah. Care to be fair, the 80s was us being out of food as a nation. We were sort of <laughs> kind of all out. Reaganomics. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, the fucking Rick goes, that casserole looks good. And I'm like, oh, yeah. And the church's singing was excellent. Shut the fuck up. Stop yeah. gaslighting me, movie. Really, Rick? Describe what you like about it. Really? <laughs> also, I like that it looks like it can't be cum or shit, but also both. Ew. <laughs> they, they also cut to the child's plate multiple times and and it's clearly not a casserole. Nope. <laughs> she's got like whole vegetables on her plate and it's very yeah, confusing. No, she's eating the leftover carrots from their picnic. Yeah, there you right. go. And why, why this just so much wrong with this scene. All the men, and by all the men, I guess I mean Rick and Dave, are wearing neckties. Like yep. they're fully in their work clothes with their ties, like dangling in their casserole. Casual the ties. They're not even in a double Windsor, Kara. These guys are laid back. <laughs> Do you, chill. What are the sort of rules? I don't know these things. Do you wear a tie when you're eating dinner? You wear a tie while you fuck your wife is what you do. In the in 1986, you had a fucking tie that you wore. <laughs> so, and then they have this, like this, they're supposed to just be having some banter, Rick and Dave. No, oh, I can't with the banter. Oh my oh God, God I we're can't just like, I like to cook. I like to eat. That's why we're so good at friends. I'm good at cooking. I'm good at eating. It just, this goes on for like it's three. It's eternal. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> have you ever talked to stop. an old person and you're like, like, oh, yeah, it lasted too long, huh? Probably shouldn't have been around this long. It's young people's version of that. That's why old people talk like that. They were young people who talked In like this. Too. Oh, God, yeah, right, right. Yeah. So, okay, so after dinner, David goes to put the kid to bed, and Rick and Claire are sitting around while Rick admires their fucking Hobby Lobby plaque decor. Yeah. Okay. I thought there was at least going to be the offer of a threesome here. I found this scene very disappointing. Mm-hmm. Right. 
So, yeah, so Rick is looking at this plaque that says God is love. And he's like, hey, I have a question for you about your religion. Which is like, Rick, what are you doing? Right. Like you were, you. you were our guy <laughs> earlier you, with the eye rolls. We were with you. You don't open the door to her. You know better. Every uh, Christian just dreams of this moment when their non-Christian <laughs> friend says, I would like to talk about your religion. I hate to argue with you, but I say that if any of us were trapped in a room with people this boring, we too would start reading the furniture and asking <laughs> what they thought of <laughs> So there's probably a bunch of cut footage of him being like, so that chair, you talk now. So that chair. Four legs. <laughs> four, went with four, because really three would have done the trick. <laughs> so yeah. So, but now I, I will say like in Rick's defense, if I was stuck with this couple, I might try to provoke this fight too, right? He just doesn't, he doesn't <laughs> follow through because he goes, so your plaque says God is love. So um, why would there be a hell? And I'm like, oh, that's a great question, Rick. I bet David's answer is real stupid. Yeah. <laughs> and it is. His answer is some people deserve to burn for eternity. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's the uh, judge metaphor that Christians are always so sure is great, but they often confuse themselves while they're laying it out. Yes. Oh, uh -huh. this is so, oh, this is, it's a lot. How are you guys? I'm interested in just sitting back quietly and hearing how you guys explain this scene to the audience. Okay, so so David basically says, okay, so imagine that you're a traffic court judge. And I'm like, I, why not just a regular judge? Why is it always fucking traffic court? Why do they have to make it so anodyne? Anyway, you're, Relatable. you're Relatable. a traffic <laughs> court judge. And, and you're the judge and your son comes in and he's the defendant. What would you do? And I'm like, well, I'd recuse myself. You'd Obviously, recuse yourself, you would 100%. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like by law, I'm sure I have to. But, but no, nope, like, not no. this judge because he's no. God. No, right. Because this, So this judge says the right thing to do would be to convict him and issue a fine, but then pay that fine yourself. And I'm like, that is three different wrongs in a row. Yes. Yeah. All the things are wrong. You should convict him by default. <laughs> Then you should pay his fine for him. But what? Then you have to pay the fine to yourself. It's all wrong. It's wrong on wrong on wrong. Well, and that's just where the analogy falls apart, right? Is that that like you're paying the fine to yourself in this instance, right? Who is God paying the fine to? Yeah. And also, like, it's a hard turn when he just goes, that's what God did when he murdered his kid. Yes. Like, that's the confusing part, right? Like this analogy really breaks down when he says that God sent his son to earth to die. To pay the fine. Yeah, but that's right. not yeah. paying a fine. That's death. <laughs> yeah, right. why are you using such a weird milk toast example when your punchline's going to be, and the sacrifice of Abraham was fulfilled by the yes. blood of the lamb? And also, it's like, <laughs> here's the part where I'm confused because being raised Mormon, like, fucked me up in a lot of ways. And one of the things that's very specific to the Mormon theology is that the Trinity is not a thing. Like there's God, there's Jesus, and there's the Holy Ghost, and they're three separate entities. Like that is really important to their theology. So as I'm listening to this, I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. You're talking about paying the fine yourself, but that's not what you're saying happened because your kid died. That's not you as the judge coming in to pay the fine. That's you letting your kid take the fucking heat. Well, and then also, like, the, he didn't die either because he came back to life. So that would be like paying the fine yourself, but actually having your kid pay it, but actually taking it back and giving him the money back afterwards. It, it None of it makes any fucking sense. Well, I'm pretty sure it still fucking hurt when he died. Sure, Isn't that the sure. hard part of dying? <laughs> like, just, just because you come back no, doesn't no, mean you I, didn't I, die. Okay, I, I would argue the hard part of dying is not the hurt on the way. It's the not existing anymore. It's the fact that well, you don't get to continue to live as a human. This is an interesting take, right? Because this is something I study. This is something I'm actually quite interested in as a researcher, not to take a hard left turn. Ooh, yeah. What do those people's teeth tell you? There are, no, I can't. You know what? When you do a Google search, your fake website is too high now. In it's SEO. so it's high. It's, so, all, it's yeah. way up there, Karen. We're going to need to negotiate for some I don't know what we're going to do. I, 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 I started this train in motion and I don't know how to stop we it. We can stop it. We'll stop it. I have this a plan. Is Big Jizzy Man Cow and Marsh's Wikipedia page all over again. I have a plan. But anyway, so it, it's pretty interesting because there are quite a few like psychometric tools. So, so kind of like psychology assessments 
surveys that really try to dial into this. And it's different for everyone. So fear of death is pretty universal, but most people, or I shouldn't say most, people who fear death fear wildly different aspects of death. And so whereas you said pretty adamantly, like clearly the part that sucks about dying is the fact that you no longer exist. Only a certain percentage of people feel that way. Interesting. A lot of other people are afraid of the of the pain that comes with death. Or I've, the done fear that I've done pain. I've done that. Look, <laughs> that, you do pain all the fucking time. You yeah, know? but you've never done death pain. I've done pretty close to death <laughs> pain. <laughs> no, one's, no one's starting to die, and he's like, text Kara, text Kara. <laughs> this her. isn't as bad as the heart attack This was. is anywhere <laughs> close to as bad. I had a migraine once that lasted two and a half days. Yeah. <laughs> and see, my fear of death is that no one will keep renewing the domains of my prank yeah, website. Right, so right, they're right. all that's, coming that's at it for different angles. We need to add that to the study. Don't you worry about that, Eli. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do love Rick's response, right? Because he does this whole stupid judge monologue. You got to pay the fine to yourself from yourself, blah, 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 blah. Right. And Rick just goes, yeah, I <laughs> yeah. don't know. <laughs> he's, he's not so sure about human sacrifice as a means of adjudicating masturbation guilt. <laughs> <laughs> when you put it that way, Noah. <laughs> Also, there's just a, there's this fucking fantastic filmmaking choice because he does the like, oh, it costs you your pride, blah, 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 blah. And they do a pan across because they think this is a very deep moment, but it makes it seem like Rick's just going into his own doodly do out of boredom. Yeah. Right? That he's just like, <laughs> he's just, we lost Rick, guys. We lost him. Bring him back. Ratcha. No, Rick Rick is like, I don't know. I don't know if I believe in a God that would be generous enough to pay my traffic fine for me. And he says, no, no, there's still a cost to it. It's your pride. You have to admit that you fucking suck. Yep. And and yes, that is a huge part of Christianity, admitting that you suck and saying that you suck out loud all the fucking time and then acting like you don't, right? That's the other big part. Yeah, yeah. He's literally, they cut to them lying in bed talking about how Rick is bad at Christian. And he literally says to her, no matter how many times I explain it to Rick, he just doesn't seem to understand. And I'm like, yeah, you and me both, mustache. (laughs) It's very confusing. Right. Maybe the problem is that what you're telling Rick is nonsense, (laughs) right? Yes. Yeah. And this is, of course, where I realized for the first time that the point of this movie is that David's eventual death is going to be like the why of David's death is going to be justified by the fact that it will Christianize Rick. So just get ready for that. I was so bored that I didn't even realize David is going to die in this movie at this point. <laughs> I hadn't put those things together. I was still confused as to why she was hanging out with Rick at the beginning of the movie and looking through a, a photo album. She goes, do you think Rick will ever become a Christian? And David's like, well, I'm sure it'll happen in the next 37 minutes minus the credits. Yeah, it's just going <laughs> to... Uh, bound to happen. Interminable. Well, they just have to keep praying for him. Okay, so when we cut to the next morning. The family's sitting around having breakfast. And Claire goes to get the sugar and there's a note in the sugar. And at first I'm like, okay, dude, that's just fucking gross. But no, this one is the one that the daughter left for her. Yeah, I wrote this scene is kind of cute. Shut up, don't at me. Yeah, right. Yeah. (laughs) Sorry, guy. (laughs) No, I wrote the same. I was like, look, that we I'm supposed to make fun of that. It's my job. But if my son ever does that for me, I'm gonna insert that note under my eyelids so I can see it every time I blink. (laughs) She like she opens it thinking it's gonna be from Dave, and then it's in like daughter's crayon scrawl, and she looks at the daughter, and the daughter's so pleased with herself, and then the husband like winks at the daughter, and I was like, oh God, this is too much. And they all have a hug and they all smooch. And yeah, Yeah. there is a great moment, though, where she pauses afterwards and it seems like she's not ready to tell the daughter she loves her back. Like she's like, (laughs) oh, yes, I love spending time. Value our time together. (laughs) And I think that labels would make that too similar to what other people experience. Why are you crying? (laughs) Why are you crying? All right, so now we're kind of, something's going to happen in this movie, I swear. So we cut to Dave. He's at work. Rick comes in, tells him the boss needs to talk to him. Now we're going to get to the him going to see the boss, and the boss is in the, the, the toupee, and it's going to be amazing. But before that, I have to point to this computer that's sitting behind <laughs> Dave in his office. You could crawl in that motherfucker and lie down. I would give you a oh. thousand goddamn dollars for whatever the fuck that computer is. This is something on a shelf in Noah's house that he's like, you know, this is the first Galaga or yeah, whatever. Right, yeah. it. <laughs> oh. oh, that thing just looked amazing. Anyway, so yeah, so he goes to the boss's office. This is the first time that we see the toupee. 
This is the only time we see the toupee. I am. I, I see it every time I close my fucking eyes. I, I see. Care. I see. <laughs> it looks like Walter Matthau dressed as a beetle for Halloween. Yes. It's insane. Like, I like. I am not exaggerating when I say I have seen more convincing wigs at the fucking Halloween, the Spirit Halloween store. Right? Yeah, it's like an Elvis wig because it's like jet black. This yes. guy's toupee. It is black on black. Right, and none of the other hair on this man is jet black. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like really dramatic against the wooden room that he's sitting in, yeah. in the green leather chair. It's all so 80s. I just, I love it. It almost looks like they added his hair in post. It's incredible. <laughs> so... So the, he comes in. We we all pause for the for a moment to to, to take in the toupee. We start the scene again, <laughs> and he's getting fired. The boss is firing David, but he's doing it in the most roundabout, like trying to sneak up on the job from the side, kind of a manner. Yeah, the, I thought the the like, but if you fuck me, was what he was coming around <laughs> to, but he doesn't. <laughs> right, no. this dialogue makes sense if like, but. You know, I've always wanted to know if a man is different at giving oral sex than a woman. Yes. So <laughs> oh what do you God. think? <laughs> oh, and this is the first weirdest. Here comes the first weirdest line in the whole movie. Uh-huh. You guys remember? He's like, he does. It takes him forever to tell him he's fired. And clearly Dave's like, I get it. I'm fired. Like he's like, Yeah, right. You, you can just, you don't have to keep hemming and hawing. And then, but then the first thing he asks him is, how long is this for? Yes. Yes. You're fired, dude. That's forever. <laughs> so, I, I was going to ask you guys because you're old people. Was Were firings a temporary thing until 1992? No. Like a timeout? No. So you could get laid off temporarily, right? Like a company would like a, a lay a person oh. off and then like months later, you know, whenever the business picks back up, they would they would get them again. But he doesn't say you're laid off. He says you're fired. He says they've eliminated your position because of the merger. So yeah, no, that's that's a you're fired thing. Yeah, and he's giving him severance. Yeah, and and his two weeks vacation pay. And I wrote, ooh, severance. What's that? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky <laughs> bastard. Different time. We're living in a different time. And but then but David is like, well, you know, boss, I I'm not worried about this because I'm a Christian and I'm sure that God has something even better in the in the works for me. And the boss is like, hey, you know, whatever it takes for you to walk the fuck out of my office right goddamn now. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Dave is really showing his psychopathy card here, and the yes. boss is looking. He's yeah, forming. he's weirdly insistent. Yeah, <laughs> he's weirdly insistent about it. It's like he's saying, well, you know, I actually had another job set up, but what he's at, but the words coming out of his mouth are. The creator of the universe has <laughs> promised nothing bad will ever happen. Right. Yeah, and his boss is just that. like, uh huh. <laughs> cool. <laughs> well, so I wrote in my notes, I bet the boss is feeling better about firing him now. Right. But of mm. course, in this stupid movie, the boss is like overawed by how Christian he is about his firing. Right. Yeah. It's pretty inconsistent because they do say that later. But in this scene, the boss is terrified <laughs> you can yeah. he is really uncomfortable his toupee is just a shaken yeah yeah it's literally spinning around on his head at this point <laughs> this reminds me of the only time this happened to me when i worked at the toy store which is i declined to hire someone and he emailed me back to say that god had put in his heart that he would end up working in the toy store we worked at so he applied <sighs> through the main toy store and then he was a convicted child sex offender <laughs> so he didn't get to work oh, at the toy Christ. store <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what this memory invoked in me. That's what this scene did. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So David goes home to tell Claire the bad news. She's like, so how was your day? And he goes, ah, that's a great question that you have asked how my day was. Mm. Uh, different. 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 That's yeah, answer. that's the word he used. Yeah. I feel like my wife would not like me to say getting laid off was different. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. And then she goes, how long is it for? Yeah. What is happening? What I couldn't. I was like, what? This is where it's in all caps in my notes. I said, is this a rich white people thing? Temporary firings? It is, though. Like, yeah. I don't understand. So, yeah. So, so but she's like, I, I don't understand it at all. You were employee of the year last year. And he's like, yeah, it turns out that that's just the thing they give you instead of money. It means absolutely <laughs> fucking nothing. Yeah. No, it's right. just, uh, it's literally, they let you know that you were the least troublesome employee. <laughs> That's what they mean. <laughs> right. 
And he goes like, he's like, don't worry. God is still in control. You just have to trust him. And I'm like, I cannot think of anything that would make me more nervous to hear in that moment if I was Claire than the words he just fucking said. And Claire is clearly a, a multi-dimensional character, the only multi-dimensional character in this film. Mm. Like she is struggling with this, right? She's like, I don't buy it. And then he gives her like a tchotchke, like a Christian yes. tchotchke. And I'm like, who, you just got fired. Why are you spending money on this? Yeah. yeah. I thought you might be having doubts. So I went to Hobby Lobby, still no barcodes, don't worry. <laughs> and uh, got us this stupid plaque that says everything's going to be all right. Yes. Yeah, right, right. And the plaque says, in every situation, just trust that God will do for those who trust him holy will find him wholly true. What? That's the quote. In other words, if you promise to believe regardless of the evidence, this is going to seem super true. Yeah, it'll seem, <laughs> seem true is the operative yeah. word. If evidence doesn't change your beliefs, your beliefs never have to change. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the chachki. We put this in a frame for you. <laughs> I need reminders of all the true things that I know. I don't know about you guys, yeah, I but I have a bunch of like, my wall. gravity yeah, exactly. is real, yeah, yeah. kindness <laughs> is important. I just put that around. I have cause <laughs> yeah. precedes effect up in my office, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, so then we get this amazing him looking for a job montage. Yes. Yeah. And you know he's at home because he's in a casual collared button-up shirt. <laughs> and there's a smooth bass line behind Oh, my God, with a that little, bass line. a little synth for flair. Oh, it's yes. so good. When the music came on, I said, looking for jobs to the music Noah was conceived Yeah, to. right. <laughs> <laughs> so, and also, like, look, if, if you're, if I'm, filming a montage of a guy looking for a job. I'm going to have him going in and out of things. I mean, I'm sitting there taking interviews. This movie didn't have time for all that shit. We get an entire montage of him circling ads in the classifieds and then crossing them out. Yeah, and then, ooh, my favorite, there's sort of an interstitial because they go to bed at night mm -hmm. and they show him sleeping like a fucking baby, not a care in the world. Yeah. And she's looking Hell yeah. rough. And yeah. I'm like, welcome to the fucking patriarchy. And then the second day, oh my God, his shirt. It's so epic. I want it. It's all I could think about. I still am thinking about that cool 80s shirt he was wearing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that's the thing is that he thought maybe the problem when he was looking for jobs yesterday is that his shirt wasn't jaunty enough. So he's gone with the jauntiest possible fucking shirt. I think that's legitimate. Honey, I went out and bashed a jester and uh, <laughs> I feel like this will really help me for my phone interviews. I love it. Kara, I'm getting you this shirt. Please do. Yeah. I will wear it gonna... every day. It's, the cool, it's like <laughs> color yeah. blocked. It's so fucking cool. <laughs> so. Oh, oh. And then clearly like he can't find a job. And so mm -hmm. the baseline, which is going the whole time, it's like, it's like so like cool. At the end, it goes, womp, womp. It, <laughs> it does. literally yep. does. It just womp, slows womp. down and womp, womps on him. <laughs> So now, okay, so then we get David and Rick, they're out on a boat, and I love this boat because Rick's like, boy, I love Saturdays. It's great having a day off of work. Oh, shit, I'm sorry, man. Ah, ah, the day of Yeah, I shouldn't have brought it up. He asked him how the job hunt's going, and he goes, oh, so going as bad as this fish, and I'll tell you, Rick. This was the only way men could communicate until 2011, Kara, okay? <laughs> this was all men were legally allowed to say to each other. If you said an emotion, you went to jail. No, that's true. Jail. You guys. For homosexuality. You guys, <laughs> at this point, Rick in his jaunty hat. Did you notice that his hat looked like they just took like the tag off of it? It's yes. Like this, yeah. It's There's like this very hat. crisp bucket fishing hat that they like put little, I guess, what are those things called? Like the little baits? Yeah, the what do yeah, they call the, the, like the uh, yeah with the hooks worms? in them? Are you trying to say the no, word? No, they're not worms real right worms. No, they're, 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 they're fake. Lures. Tackle. Lures. It's tackle. Yeah. There we okay. They put the I had tackle a terrifying like, moment in his hat. You thought worms were fish? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, he's wearing a he's wearing a fucking fishing hat with with fish hooks in it and tackle yeah. like stuck to the hat. Like I don't whatever. Yeah. I don't think anybody does that. But I notice at this point, I look down. This is the half waypoint of the yes. movie. Yeah. We are only. 30 minutes, less than like 26 minutes into the movie at this point. Right. <sighs> oh, and of course, this is where he's got to go like, oh, and hey, by the way, what did you say to the boss when you were, when he fired you? He was so impressed with all your Christianity and everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. To be fair, if someone had said that to me as I fired them, I would also repeat that story. Yeah, people. well, that's true. Yeah. So, but yeah, but David explains the Jesus-iness of it all. I wrote that in my notes and then Spellcheck didn't underline Jesus-iness, which baffles me. <laughs> 
Right. Yeah, he said, because I'm a Christian, God has promised to work everything out for my good, which I didn't realize that was the tagline of Christianity. I missed that one. That's a pretty too. good promise. I'll yeah. take that. Yeah. yeah. So we're... Yeah. So, okay, so then we cut to Claire and she's surrounded by paper bills the way the poor people do, you know, where we just surround ourselves with all the bills we can't pay just so we can stare at them. Oh, Christian movie bingo card. Yep. yep. Everybody, mm-hmm. there's a square we haven't filled in in a while. But David shows up. He's there to comfort her in a sweater so awful. I'm surprised Eli doesn't own the damn thing. I want that sweater. Yep. Kara wants the shirt. I want the sweater. Sure. Fair. Oh, yeah, I did write. Don't worry, honey. My Fair Isle sweater will make everything better. <laughs> it's, it's intense. It's also a bit too, it's like one size too small. But everything he wears is one size everything's too small. Everything's yeah. one size too I, small on David's massive pecs. So I don't understand this just from a practical perspective. So this is like a middle. He does a lot of push ups and no, a lot of lies. <laughs> I'm, tra- <laughs> I'm changing thoughts here, Eli. Um, what? Okay, so this is an upper middle class white Christian family. It's, it's a, it's a mom, dad, and child. And they live in like a fucking nice A-frame house in the Mountain woods in California. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Winnie mm-hmm. the Pooh's house. How yeah. do they have no savings? Literally, right, yeah. he lost his job last week and now they're like fucked. They have no money. They yeah. say they have $200 in the checking account. Yeah. And, and so, but like, we actually like sit there and listen to David explain which bills they have to pay right away and how they're going to, how much do they have in groceries and stuff. This goes on for like two fucking minutes. But we finally resolve with, yeah, see, we've got enough money to not die for a whole week. One week? And then Claire's like, yeah, but then what? Like how? I just don't get it. Right. A week? I don't know. Maybe more time is supposed to have gone by or whatever. Like, it was the 80s, Kara. You didn't need savings. Everyone died at 33 and a half. So yeah, if you and- made it to your 34th birthday, they gave you a gold watch, which you could sell for enough money to preserve you until you passed away. And clearly his ethic is God will take care of us. We don't need any form of financial planning. Yes, right, right, exactly, right. So he says that at the end. He's like, well, you know, Jesus will take care of us after that. She says, I wish I had as much faith as you. And I'm like, are you sure you don't mean I wish you had as little faith as me? <laughs> right, yeah. Or I wish you had a plan besides the creator of right. the universe got you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, clearly this movie's plot is stalling. So we're going to give it a minute to like, I don't know, get through traffic or whatever the hell. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will they be able to find parking at the grocery store? Will she fully preheat the oven before baking that spaghetti? Is the Johnson's shed a little closer to the property line than the HOA permits? Find out the answers to questions exactly that Caucasian and boring when we return for the finally something happens conclusion of Consider It All Joy. And so that's why I'm afraid I've got to let you go. I understand, boss. I'm glad. Again, very sorry. Well, you know, I they don't take this the wrong way, but I believe that God has larger plans for me. Hmm? Yeah, he is. Sir, as a Christian, I know that God has a very special mission for me. And so, you know, this is just part of his plan. Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, it's God? God yeah, has a plan? Yeah, Jesus Christ has a very... I, I'm sorry, what, what, are you, what are you doing there? No, nothing. I was just putting away my letter opener. Don't need to open any letters right now. Sure. Sure, yeah. So anyway, so so Christ knows all and he sees all. This job and everyone in it, he has a plan for them. Everyone in the building, sure. Hey, Mary, can we get security up here real quick? Why why, why are you calling security? There's a bird in the vents. Sure, yeah, got it. Anyway, so God's plan for me isn't about this job. It's about the fate of the universe and of my soul. And your soul, of course it is. Hey, I'm going to step out of this room for a second, but we're going to have someone help you with your stuff to your car. Oh, I, no need for that, boss. No, I, I insist. Okay, then. All right. Good seeing you. Ah, nice guy. Hey, Mary, when I say security, I mean fucking... That dude's going to wear me as a hat. Fuck! (laughs) (laughs) And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to open up the next day with Claire making dinner. When she turns around and all of a sudden, there's David with a big fucking bouquet of roses. Yeah, she instantly goes, you got a job. And I was like... 
the first thing I thought was, why the fuck are you spending money on roses? You guys can't pay your bills. Yeah. Right. Like, but but <laughs> why would you start with that? Like, well, because what if his answer was, oh no, somebody just gave me this. No, I had an affair. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) That'd be so good. But she did get a job. And he's like, she's like, well, how did you get a job? And he he starts telling us the story in this like, bizarre amount of superfluous detail. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. How do, this is, again, a boring story you can't escape from where someone's like, oh my gosh, this is actually really funny. And you're like, hey, can I punch you if it's not? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just you said it's a really funny story. So like, I can just hit you if it's not, right? No, you're done with your story. <laughs> Let me tell you how stupid this fucking story is. The guy who just spent, what, what were we, an hour and 10 minutes into this fucking episode to talk about the first 36 <laughs> minutes of this movie, that guy just told you the details were superfluous. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but but like a child explaining an episode of their favorite cartoon to you, he explains how he got his fucking job. Right the, from a, he, he, he ran into a dude at the fucking hardware store. That's all that fucking happened. That's it. He tells us that in 360 words. Yep. Anyway, so now we jump forward three months, I guess. Right? Right, randomly. They didn't give us any cue except that well, yeah. Then they say it's three months later. Right. In the laziest, dumbest possible way. So he's getting ready for work. He's putting on his tie because, you know, you have to wear a tie to have sex or use the bathroom or whatever in 1986. <laughs> he casserole. That's his post shitting tie. <laughs> yeah, right. So he's putting on his tie and his wife is standing there. He goes, do you know what today is? She goes, no. What is it? He goes, it's the three month anniversary of me starting my new job. And I'm like... <sighs> What kind of weird motherfucker would know that? (laughs) Exposition. Oh, and before they do that, they do these weird cutaways because we didn't mention this at the beginning. It's actually not important. I don't know why I'm bringing it up. But early on when she's talking about meeting David and falling in love with David, she's like, I moved to the lake. So like they live at the lake, generically. The lake, lake. yeah, they live at a lake. And they Mm -hmm. keep doing these cutaways of the lake, but they're like... Straight out of Evil Dead. Mm-hmm. They're the weirdest. Like there are there are multiple times in this film where the music choice or the like filters that I guess there weren't filters back then, but like the way that they chose to do the visuals are straight out of a horror movie. Right, because they don't know. And there's also scenes that are directly out of a porn, but they don't know. <laughs> oh, we're going to get to some of those yeah, in a right. second, man. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, by the way, also, while while you were talking, Carol, I remembered that I was really excited when we had a scathing episode come out on February 29th so that we could have one for every calendar date. So I want to retract the thing I said about what kind of weird motherfucker would know three months. All right. But yeah, so dad leaves for work. The mom and, and the daughter go bike riding. And I only bring that up because of how incredibly and impossibly careless it now looks to see a four-year-old riding on the back of a bike with no helmet. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's so terrifying to me. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Is, I wouldn't let someone ride their bike near my three-year-old, right. let alone <laughs> fucking prop him up on the handlebars with a fucking pair of <laughs> tuning forks and a seesaw to keep him up there or whatever yeah, the hell right. is going on. So I did not even know that this was just so of my childhood. Right. The only thing I noticed is that it's one of those weird molded plastic bike seats that's like bolted to the bike behind the seat. Mm-hmm. And the, just the way that it's stuck there the child's view. So the child is behind mom, not in front of mom. And her view is like mom's tramp stamp. Right. Yes. Exactly. Like it's, it's the yeah. strangest. Like, how would that be fun for that child? Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So they, they, uh, they go on their bike ride and then mom reads her a book about how awesome Jesus is. Bizarre little snippet of this book that we get about how the flowers have nice clothes or whatever the fuck that was. Oh my God, it's my favorite Jesus story. I'm so, I, we've never had a Christian movie do the part where Jesus was like, you're all naked to me. And they were like, what? And he was like, nothing, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. So yeah, but but just then there's a knock on the door and it's a police officer there to tell her that David is dead, finally. Yeah, this took a dark turn. We all saw it coming. Hey, I think if someone answers the door with their four-year-old, you maybe take them aside. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Right. But he's like, yeah, so uh, there was an accident. Your your husband's all kinds of dead. Don't worry. It wasn't his fault because he's a fucking saint and does no wrong in this movie. It was a drunk driver. 
Right. But he really gets into it. He's like, and then he fell off the side of the road and it speared through his heart and he actually didn't die right away. No, he was in he was in so much pain. He was begging God to really, how you doing, little Noah kid? Noah says that's not really the bad part, but trust me, that's <laughs> the bad part. It's yeah. the bad part. It's not, <laughs> I, I think he was really excited to not exist anymore because his current existence was just so bad. It was so boring. You know? So- yeah, we couldn't make a movie about it. Anyways, then this three-year-old came and took his teeth. Oh, God. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's a callback, Claire. <laughs> but she says, like, he was killed. And then there's this weird, like, dong sound. And this camera zooms in on her all shaky and shit. Yeah, her face goes all wide. It's like a groovy camera effect. And I really yeah. felt her pain in that moment. Yeah, no, they, they were very proud of The director was very proud of that moment. Yeah. So, okay. So then we get her, like... She flashes back to the rest of the movie, right? You know, she's like now remembering all the scenes we saw earlier. Again, imagine that she's telling Rick this story the whole time. This is still her answer to how did you two meet? In her story, she's now remembering things that were in her story. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, to be fair, if she had had a little more character to start out with, God wouldn't have had to kill her husband to shape her up. <laughs> oh, that's true. No, that's true. <laughs> Maybe read a little more fiction. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. That's another, that's like a weird thing about all this lore too. It's like Dave dying. Yes, it happened to him, but like now he don't know about it anymore. Yeah, like right, it actually right, happened yeah. to her. And what the fuck did the child do to deserve that? But she just didn't have enough character. <laughs> no, trust me. That child was going to grow up to be a fucking asshole without this. <laughs> and this, this character upgrade she got early and often much needed. Yeah, trust me. Clearly, much. Clearly. Although later, and I know I'm, I'm flashing forward later, she does not seem bothered by the fact that her dad. No. No. She's like, mom needs to get over this. But yes. <laughs> I have a hunch. Here's my thought. Okay. <laughs> have you guys heard of the term philosophical zombies? Yeah. Right. Which is the idea that not all humans have consciousness, that some humans might just be acting like they have consciousness. What? Right. The way that like, we're pretty sure that there are like, we can attribute that to like clouds and fish and <laughs> certain kind of animals that we know don't have higher consciousness. I think at least half this cast are philosophical <laughs> zombies. So- Okay. At least half. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, right. I can't argue with you. So we'll just go right, on. Exactly. So, yes. <laughs> so now we get a fucking sadness montage. Yes, we just watch her be sad in different places. She's sad on the porch. She's sad in bed. She's sad at breakfast. She's sad at church. Right. But she doesn't really ever cry. She just kind of stares into space a lot. Yeah. Crying right, for women right. was illegal until 9 11, Kara. Yeah, right. that's true. Which you would know if you weren't doing it. <laughs> That's fair. Um, I guess also therapy was illegal because she never right. actually gets help. Oh, well, definitely. That's for real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. She wasn't a crazy person. Come on. But yeah. Yeah. Also, I just want to point out that when we see her being sad at church, the, apparently they're still leaving an empty space in the pew for David. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like his ghost is there. <laughs> y'all y'all remember Dave. Uh, he's the one who died in such terrible, terrible agony. How you doing, little girl? And so we're just going to all space out like Dave's still here for the next six to eight months for dramatic <laughs> yes, montages. So no idea. And then we get my, my favorite scene in this movie and maybe my favorite scene in any movie this year so far. Yeah, this is a good scene. Oh my God. So we have these two church ladies. They're gossiping about Claire and they are the fucking worst. Best. Horrible. Just Best. bad people. They're just... This is how I talk about people. Hey, if you want to know who I really am, <laughs> podcast listener, this is what I do. This is just me. This is the real me. Is just an old lady being like, that lady is being a real bee about her dead husband. She's, Let me tell you. She's been grieving way too long at this point. Well, you'd think she'd be over it by now, but no, she's still grieving. She literally says that. Yes. You'd think she'd be like, like, like she's performing Formatively grieving and now, oh God, it's taking, I have to feel sorry for her. I yes. can't believe that. And like, okay, here's the, like, can we just, I've got to deconstruct this for a second. I've got to get in the minds of the people who made this film because this is a pro-Christianity film. Right. So why did they make the church ladies awful? The worst possible humans. No, that's not supposed to be awful. That's not supposed to be awful? No, I think that's supposed to be like, get over it. No, it's, yeah, it, but that's awful. It's awful to say that. Right. When, she, when she's talking to Barbara, they make clear that this is supposed to be awful, that they at least recognize that this is fucking awful. But yeah, the women are going like, yeah, you know, she's 
she's she, you got to wonder about a person's spiritual commitment if they're still sad that their husband went to heaven this deep into it, right? I I feel like the old ladies have a pretty solid point. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> if I genuinely believed that all the people in my life died were zooped to a dimension of infinite joy for all eternity, it'd be inconvenient, but I would also kind of feel like I had to get over it relatively quickly. No, that's fair. That's fair. They literally say they need to pray for her so that God will change her, quote, bad attitude. Bad attitude. That entire That's thing, they- that was all a quote. I wrote that one down too, Kara. It's, we better pray for her that God would change her bad attitude. Her ba- the woman whose husband just died. Like, I think at this point, it's supposed to be what, like two months ago or something? At most, yeah. At most, yeah. She's like, she's like, yeah, just like she doesn't seem very thankful about God killing her husband at all. And then they walk away and Claire was standing behind them the whole right there. She's time. an she inch from their fucking faces. It's I laughed for so long. I laughed for a minute, a Christian calendar minute at how close to them she was. Oh. So, okay. So we go back home, she's cleaning up She and she notices one of David's notes that she apparently hadn't noticed to this point. A note from the grave. Ooh. Well, right, the horror movie <laughs> st- strings that show up behind it certainly suggest that, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I have to be clear, like, we're not exaggerating. The movie does literally a bang. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so she picks up the note. It says, I love you more than words could ever say. And look, I, I like the note thing, David. I really do. It's very sweet, but try harder, okay? I'm saying that is barely like one step above heart candy in terms of sentiments. Yeah. yeah. David, I'm going to need you to make a Jewish friend to up your note game. Yeah, okay? There you go. I know you're doing the Something, best man. you can. Also, like it occurred to me in this moment because I do this. I, I leave Lucinda little notes like that all the fucking time. And I just, it never occurred to me how creepy that would be if she finds one after I die. So I think I should stop doing that shit. Yeah. Or leave them in more obvious places. Right, no. yeah, exa- <laughs> right, yeah. If you start to feel the chest pain again, be like, note under the sink. There's yeah. a note under the sink. <laughs> <laughs> also tell Kara that this is hurts <laughs> and it's normal. It's a normal amount of hurt. <laughs> so, okay. So then, all right, there's a, she's, she's sitting there being sad, looking at the note and everything. And suddenly there's a ring on the doorbell. It is a character that we've never met who is going to join us 41 minutes into a 58-minute movie. I love her, though. It's a lovely, safic porn here (laughs) to come be the movie now. (laughs) It's very obviously a lesbian porn. Everything about this place, this is a lesbian porn at this moment, yes. It's true. So she's come over to borrow an egg, right? And I'm sorry, like, I know that was like a normal thing in the 80s probably, but I would freak the fuck out if one of my neighbors showed up asking me for an egg, right? Wouldn't that be the weirdest goddamn <laughs> is, thing in the yes, world? No, I don't think that would be weird. What? It'd be so insane. First of all, go buy your own fucking egg. Like, what a weird <laughs> thing. To, you're going to borrow an egg. What? And then you're going to come back later after you buy egg. What is so important? <laughs> the pan is hot. You didn't check that you had fucking eggs before you began the cooking process? <laughs> you, no. Stop wait, what? cooking. Go buy eggs. No, come it's back. not weird. It's not weird. I disagree it's with you. Super God. weird. She, You're in you California. You do this, don't you? You do this. That's what it is. Kara do. does this shit. She's trying to normalize it and make it seem like she's not no, a lunatic. No, they're ignoring all the context. This woman showed up to her door, apologized profusely, was like, I'm so sorry. I was in the middle of baking a cake and I realized I didn't have enough eggs. I'm sure one egg. Is there any so way I can borrow an egg? So go to the fucking story, <laughs> fucking polyamory freak. They live in the woods. <laughs> you just roll out of bed in between the two fashion models of whatever gender they've chosen that day every morning and then you borrow your breakfast eggs from the commune across the street. Yeah, okay, Don't stop, you care, Santa Maria. Stop trying to turn me against Barbara and Claire and our wild, wild ways. You guys are just jealous. This is jealousy. I know that's all this is. <laughs> So, okay, so, so, but, but Claire's like, yes, this is a perfectly normal thing for you to ask for. I will go get you an egg. And while she's going to get an egg, Barbara notices this plaque, one of the Christian Hobby Lobby tchotchkes. So when she comes back, she says, I see that you have a plaque with a verse from uh, Joshua on it, on your wall. Are you a Christian? (laughs) 
I wanted her so badly to be like, no, I just love words. I love words on paper. <laughs> Big fan. And she says, why, yes, I am a Christian. And Barbara goes, well, so am I. I'm like, yeah, what are the fucking odds? Exactly. Are the two white ladies in California in 1986. Here we are in 1986 in California, two Christians, as we call ourselves. <laughs> Oh, fun. And then she compliments her husband. She's like, hey, your husband's too hot to be in the movie. I don't know. She's, she's like, he was. I, he finally, was. somebody acknowledges it, though, right? Yeah. But also, like, isn't that a weird thing to say? Like, right, because, like, she doesn't know that the dude's dead yet. She's just like, wow, your husband is extremely attractive. <laughs> That's what I would say. That's what I would say. We have a hot listener who dresses up like Superman. He probably wants to be treated like a human being. Every time I see him, I'm like, look at your body. I want to lick it. And he's like, not okay. And I'm like... You can't make me stop. <laughs> so she says, yeah, that's a lovely husband of yours. I bet he's alive and stuff on. Huh? She's like, no. And, and Barbara's like, oh, sorry. So sorry. Yeah. And then there's very clearly the like, so you're single? <laughs> well, so so no, I I read this as so. Can I just get the fucking egg now? I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. You're get, holding you're, it, and apparently this is normal. But I don't know if they is there a ceremony, Kara? You, I'm not an egg hippie like you. I don't know. <laughs> Does one do a bow, say Namaste, so put on a like yarmulke like the Jews you are? <laughs> I feel like it's too important for you guys to make everything weird. And this is the least weird part of this entire film. It's just well, a okay. nice oh, lady right. checking in on her neighbor whose husband just died. And then she's like, I'm here for you. And she's like, oh my God, thank you. Everybody at church is a fucking asshole. Thank you for being here for me. And I liked this scene, God damn No, this is, this okay. is a sexual opening that she missed. Well, there's that too. And I'm not mad at that. No, neither. So, but here's the thing. Kara, is that like you have implied here that because it's the least weird thing that happens in this movie, it isn't fucking weird. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> no illusions. So, all right. So, but in your commune with your <laughs> or, or or free range eggs that you take from your <laughs> weird neighbor lovers, <laughs> it's not weird. Don't judge. <laughs> But Barbara's like, hey, if you ever need somebody to talk to, um, and then Claire's like, oh my God, I need somebody to talk to so bad. And Barbara's like, oh fuck, I meant that like later. I just, I have an egg. I have we a watch Barbara actively regret that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> just like, yeah, if you never need someone to talk to, oh my God, I'm so glad you said that. And she's, oh, she just wants to be like, I take it back. Are you sorry, I take it back. <laughs> I know it'll be awkward and it feels bad in this moment, but I don't want to do the future. So I take it back. You can't talk to me. Well, for somebody who takes it back, she is literally the best listener I have ever seen in the history of time. She's trying to fuck. Be, no, they do <laughs> the most insane montage after this. <laughs> Would yeah. you call it a montage? Because it's it's a monologue, right? So I actually refer right. to it as a montage because she, oh, it's nice. like- you like yeah. that? It's scene after scene of Claire. They have apparently been having this conversation for seven days yes. and seven nights. They, they, they're in six different there outfits. There are multiple outfit changes. Yeah. And they're in the woods. Yes. Six different outfits before it's over. They're in the kitchen table. They're on the couch. They're doing the dirty. And of course, what, like, again, like this is, it's like the Rick thing all over again. I just imagine that this woman still got like, sugar and flour and milk mixed together somewhere and she's just waiting curling to get on her countertop seven goddamn days she's like look when her I said her family have starved you, to death yeah right exactly <laughs> the birthday has come and gone now <laughs> she's still talking to this lady but yeah but but Claire's like she's explaining all of the things that suck about your husband dying she's like you know people don't want to be around me and you can just see in Barbara's face her going like oh I get it I understand that now why would you want, why would they say that? You've been talking about the thing that I opened a single sentence up to for apparently multiple days. Yeah. Six fucking days. Yeah. Now. Yep. And she's not said a word, by the way. It's all clear. It's like she one sided, fully one sided. Mm -hmm. It's weird. It's so funny. At one point, they flash over to Barbara and this actress, who is not very talented, is trying to do a listening face, but she's so clearly spacing out. Of I course. laughed out loud. Yeah. It, you can hear the like, doo, 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 <laughs> happening in her head. 
But this is also a testament to Claire's acting prowess because something tells me the writers couldn't be fucked to actually write all these words. And so Claire is just riffing it about how sad mm-hmm. it is that her husband's dead for like minutes. Well, and I love, because she's like, you know, my my husband, he, he trusted God so completely which turned out to be really stupid because God didn't help with the drunk driver at all, if you think about at it. At all, like, yeah. But the sort of the thrust of what she keeps saying to Claire is like, you know, it doesn't make any sense. I'm Christian, and yet this terrible thing happened to me, even though God could have prevented it. It's almost like that's the point of the movie, right? Yeah, yeah. But the biggest takeaway from this entire scene was the point where I looked at Eli's notes and he said, if you watch this at two times speed, it is less boring. And I realized (laughs) that you can change the speed on YouTube. It's a game changer. It's a fucking revelation, right? (laughs) Yeah. You don't think you need to do that on the 58 minute movies, but that's when you need it the most. (laughs) Yes. And at this point, there's still a lot of movie left. You'd be surprised how much movie was left even at two times speed. Yeah, so but they but they get through all, this whole montage. Finally, Barbara gets to talk, and she's like, "Hey, you know, it's okay to grieve. Even Christ grieved." And I'm like, "I can think of a lot of shit Christ did that I wouldn't recommend, though." So that's probably not <laughs> right. the right metric. Do you want to go yell at an olive tree too? Yeah, so, like, God, God, <laughs> apparently, that's cool too. And Claire goes, "You know, Barbara, you're the only one who understands me." And Barbara's like, "Oh, I don't understand you. I don't." I don't. I don't know what gave you the impression that I did. So I just picture that there were so many lean-ins for the kiss in this friendship <laughs> that Claire good, didn't yeah. pay attention to. Yeah. Well, yeah, because at the end of this scene, they go in for the hug and we're expecting them to start making out, but they don't. No. They don't. No. Terrifying. I stopped and watched some lesbian porn just to feel better about myself. <laughs> yeah, I needed to. Watching this yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. The craziest part of this movie to me is the realization at this point that it passes the Bechtel test with flying colors. Well, but... But does it, though? Because, like, they yes. only ever talk about Jesus and David. Not true. Not true. They 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 talk about, she talks about her struggles with faith. She talks to her child multiple times. Like, it, there are a lot of scenes. Oh, okay. She does, she does ask the she kid does what talk, the kid yeah, wants to fair. do. The two women talk about her. Like, there are multiple scenes where Feminist they Feminist cinema. That's it's what I've always <laughs> said about consider it all joy. Yeah, I think we need to change the parameters of the yeah, Bechdel right. test. I think that, that's the takeaway The Bechdel takeaway test here. has failed yeah. more than yes. this movie has passed. <laughs> to it, quote yes. Bechdel herself, stop saying this makes a movie feminist, dear God. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Also, I, they make a weird point at this point because- What is it? Do you guys remember kind of exactly what Barbara finally says to Claire to comfort her? Yeah, she says, I don't know why God does bad things, but I know he loves you and is going to heal you. And I wrote in my notes, why do you know that? (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. She also, she tries to give her some spiel about how basically she can handle these tests more than other people because of her like Jesus worship. And I'm like, this is not a test that is unique to Claire. Everyone dies. Like, I don't think I can make this more clear. Everyone dies. Kara, I'm not going to die, so you should probably not just Christian. Like that. I'm just not going to die, actually. <laughs> okay. I don't know if right. you've checked, but I have a hundred percent not dying right so <laughs> that's far. That's true. So. That's true. <laughs> no, but what but what Barbara says is she's like, you know, I think to myself sometimes that maybe the people that you know God piles so much on, He does that because God knows that He can handle them, and all of those people who just have no problems at all, maybe those are just lukewarm Christians who God has given up on. Mm-hmm. That's her actual fucking argument. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, first of all, where are people who have no fucking problems, right? I haven't yeah. yet to meet any of those fucking people. But secondly, that's goddamn terrifying. Apparently, yeah. Kara and her egg utopia is living a pretty <laughs> close thing. <laughs> At least I know I'm going to die, Eli. At least I know. I've I'm forgotten die. 15 ingredients for my breakfast <laughs> this morning. Time to flounce about my commune <laughs> and collect <laughs> my nutrients. I do not want to point out all the fucking logical fallacies that are <laughs> in your argument, right? Here. So, okay. Yeah, <laughs> just 15 ingredients for your breakfast. Yeah, fucking <laughs> Milk cereals. Okay. So, <laughs> so we cut to Claire. She's sad and at some tacky Hobby Lobby art that David bought, but it's the one about Jesus trusting you. And then so now she that does the trick. She, she's over that tchotchke fixed her. Right. Right. She goes up. She sees the daughter doing the passive aggressive prayer. Yes. yes. Super. Yeah. Super <laughs> weird take of the daughter on her dad's death. I think the daughter. 
daughter, again, according to the worldview, right. the daughter is fine. She's like, dude, we're going to be in heaven with dad forever. It is an infinitesimal percentage of our conscious experience that we're going to miss him. It's no big deal. It's mathematically zero. Yes. Yeah. So she literally, she's praying to God to help her mother be less sad because her dad's in heaven. So she should be happy. Right. That's the prayer. That's fucking creepy. Yeah. It's super creepy. And then, and I wish I had a better reference for this because this is where she comes out of the doodly do and she explains to Rick the chef monologue from South Park. Now, <laughs> let me explain. Okay. <laughs> Perhaps two decades ago, chef explained that God does bad things because it's our tears that give him his strength. <laughs> You can't make a baby cry unless you give the baby candy in the first place. And that appears to be the actual conclusion that she has reached at the end of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, you know, I start, I stopped thinking about, you know, all the things that God had done to me. And I started thinking about all the things that God had done for me. And, and I wrote my notes. I'm like, well, that sounds like the creepy shit that abuse victims used to cope with their abuse day to day, man. That's, that's not good at all. And I wrote in my notes. Rick is clearly converted and now he's going to be her new baby daddy because you know that's where this is going. Well, so, okay, so th that's the amazing thing is that Rick doesn't give a shit about the Christianity or how she met David. Rick is trying to fuck her now that he knows that she's single and the movie doesn't realize that. <laughs> the movie itself thinks, wow, she's really convinced Rick. <laughs> yeah, but, but so. in this weird world of lore... If Rick does end up marrying her and like having another kid with her, that's a good thing. Yep. You see this all the time in these weird Christian like stories that like somehow he like, that's the patriarchy at work that like it's now his duty to like swoop in on his best friend's widow and take over the manly fucking duties. Yes, absolutely. With that stash. <laughs> I, can't, I can't. So uh, I just, I really, I, it, it, it should be the neighbor. Right. Yes, absolutely. Why isn't it the neighbor? And so like Rick's like, so I guess your religion's really helping you cope with his death. And, and she's like, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I still cry myself to sleep most nights. And I'm like, oh, well, then it hasn't really been useful at all, really, because that's what a, a non-religious person would be doing, too. Right. Yeah, that's what a person would do. Right, a human that's being. What grief yeah. looks like. Yeah. <laughs> right. She's like, well, you know, but I'm learning to love God as much as David did right before God killed him with a drunk driver. Well, shit. <laughs> this isn't. This isn't a good plan at all. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, okay, do you do you want to pitch me on your religion again? Because I was super not listening the first time. I was really. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I thought Dave had invited me over for a threesome and then you served casserole, which is, uh, it was just like, who makes fucking food out of food? But yeah, I, but yeah, no, if you want to hit me with that, um, hit me with that pitch again, maybe I do need to vacation at the same place every year. Right. Yeah, we, so can call, we can call your neighbor over. It'd be fun. Right. Yeah. There you go. So yeah, but Rick's like, wow, you know, I've just, I've never seen a religion that really seems to work. And I'm like, okay, first you're an American. You've seen at most two religions at most of your whole goddamn <laughs> right. life. So shut the fuck up. And you were scared of that second one. Yeah. Rick, so come on. <laughs> you damn sure were. Yeah. I think you just assumed that someone was that second one. <laughs> Yeah, but he's like, yeah, no, tell me again about how much Christ loves me. And then the music fades in and the movie ends. And, and, uh, Eli and I both wrote down how fucking weird this woman's singing sounds at two times. Yeah, because that was at two edges. Of so it's like, God's <laughs> universal joy. Well, yeah. <laughs> like she's yodeling. It's the, the best. Yeah, it's really it's good. the best. I saw you guys' just notes and I had to go back and listen to it at two times speed. It was it's pretty amazing. <laughs> Yeah. All right, well, I'll tell you what, I, I guess that's it. The moral of the story seems to be, yeah, but love Jesus anyway, though. Mm -hmm. So, Kara, thanks for joining us and learning that important lesson, I guess. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, if you want to hear more from Kara, check the show notes for a link to her show, Talk Nerdy, or just keep listening because somehow we always talk her into coming back. Or check out her many websites that are available on Google.com and yes, choose the ones that you click as they rise. I oh, cannot. Just, I can't. All right. So I guess that's going to do it for our review of Consider It All a Joy. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to Groundhog Day this shit again. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, in the creator's own words, we'll be watching a magical adventure inspired by the Chronicles of Narnia, Walt Disney animated musicals, and the parables by Jesus Christ. The one man animated fugue state that is 
Strawinsky and the Mysterious House. No illusions. Look me in my heart. This uh-huh, movie is uh-huh. 30 minutes long. We still might need two episodes. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Well, we did this with a 58-minute episode. I think we could do it. There right. we go, yeah. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 447 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Kara for hanging out with us today, and a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation to patreon.com slash godawful, and thereby earn only access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Alias, Citation Needed, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Crowd, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email Godawful Movies at Gmail. Com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot of the Just on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work harder or earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Rick, Barbara, and Claire had a wild night while the kiddo was at church camp. But don't worry, they prayed about it, and God totally said it was cool. Rick learned his lesson and never asked how anyone met anyone again. (laughs) God just straight up ran out of tragedies trying to make Claire interesting, so he made her live forever instead. (laughs) Just to prove Kara wrong. Exactly. Why I ought to. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2024. All rights reserved.